All right. Stand yeah. up, Corey. Uh, all right, people. And we back again, dude. I am the Buckness. Yeah. And we got my boy Visex fucking on the shit right now. And um, so. Yes. Uh, I that know last how call you we had do your thing. Was um, how you were talking about your album and your workflow and stuff like that. And I figure we just kind of catch on to whatever we uh, missed up on. Um, yeah, you're you're a great interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Easy to get people talking. I've had a couple now it's of my turn. practice runs. Yeah. Oh, your turn. <laughs> I, right. I guess so. So like what's, <clears throat> I know you're a sound design wizard. Like you lab for hours at a time, just like trying to get a kick sounding right. Like that's something I like respect so much <laughs> that you're willing to go in there and just dissect like just figure i remember like i was just watching you make this kick like this hard style kick and it took it took a while i guess but it sounded really good in the end and you made it from scratch and i was like i never realized how insane it was to make a hard style kick from scratch <laughs> so i guess like where i want to start like how did you start did you start producing hard style like first that's the one you wanted to get into? Like one I of the started, hardest genres to produce? Dude, I've been producing hard style since like the beginning. I didn't like dabble in any other genres. I had started with like, you know, earlier hard style that was like 2004 to 2010 kind of sound where it's, uh, the kicks are a little different than they were. They were like yeah, a little more reverse bassy. when I started. Yeah, a little more gated kick style, reverse bassy type. I didn't really get into the hard kick stuff until, um, uh, I don't know, four years later or something. I started in like 2010, 11, 2000, Damn. November. I finished my first track in November, 2011. That I do know. So I must have okay. started like a year and I got like a bunch of gear. I had like this Akai keyboard. Like I had bought an interface. I had studio monitors, but I didn't produce okay. a thing. I like didn't touch anything for like a year and they were just sitting there. And um, getting, finally, I was just like, getting you know everything ready. Fuck, I just got to do it. It's going to sound like shit. I loaded it all at once. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was a big thing for you. Like, you were just kind of just a little scared to start, a little like worried about how it would sound the journey. Exactly. Yep. And for a first track, it actually was not bad. I ended up getting a pretty good oh, kick. I have the file <laughs> somewhere on my old hard drive and I've kept it. And, um, I would almost reuse that kick if I, if I, uh, <laughs> seriously, wow. I swear to God, all the leads and all the drums are retarded, but, um, <laughs> that, that one baseline is, I guess that's just been my forte and my favorite thing to do. And like, um, and it works. That's like I was saying earlier, that's like 90% of the track. And like yeah, you get that down, your track's just going to sound pretty fucking good. Mostly always. Well, Almost you know, always. I'm nowadays like my taste has become so much more deeper into like how does the mix sound? How is the sound design? How does this fit with this sound? Mm -hmm. How do these things like flow with each other, right? You know, and um yeah. and nowadays it's like I I've 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 come to find out over the years from other peers and producers that it's like yes, you can make them from scratch if like you choose to do so, but like a lot of other people um I mean beginners in maybe even professionals alike uh it's sample based out. man it's sample based yeah. it's, it's, it's layer it's not like you take a sample and just completely copy and paste because that's pretty hard to do to make it sound to fit with the rest right. of the track right so you're already oh, yeah, you're, just, yeah. you're taking other um sounds basically i mean and uh, mixing in with whatever you have you know and i have not gone as far to like take a perfectly finished kick yet because like um i just haven't really <laughs> needed to I haven't needed to. And um, do you always make a new kick? Like every track, you just kind of start building from the ground up. Everything's a concoction. No, I actually have been taking stuff from older tracks. Like I have like this whole okay. instrument rack. I, I I save all my instrument racks from like, That's what I gotta like do. kick That's templates, nice. reverse bass templates. Been. And um, okay. I'll basically stack things together. I'll even take... Um, uh reverse bass like the waves the room, 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 and like sometimes stretch them out to where it becomes a doom like a solid quarter note instead of oh, like okay. a half note um upbeat so uh um, so you're all into resampling your old stuff the professional for the most way, part really for, for about 70 percent <laughs> of it yeah um and Damn. then sometimes i'll take midi from synths and 
side chain them and even like multi-band side chain and um mm. it depends it really multi -band depends on what, side chain yeah wow. it, it depends what it needs you know what i mean it that's really what yeah. it's done. i don't like making it as complicated as it should be more than it should be really but and, when you know um, all this stuff and you know what could possibly work it's like you're like a scientist you just have to find out if it'll work I love it. That's dude. how I see you anyway. You're like this mad scientist behind the computer. I love this stuff. I mean, right now, this remix that I'm about to put out next week, I've gone through like seven or eight different bass lines. And finally, finally, last night, wow. I had like... You got it. I fucking got it, dude. And um, um, the kick, the kick theory. drum itself is a sample. I didn't go through like Ableton soundscapes and like, you know, layer a bunch Ooh, of kicks. Spending 30 kick. minutes trying I to just, just get the kick down. I just took this kick drum that I knew from another pack that a track I, that me and my boy did, but never put out years ago. And I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, those sound good. And just that kick. Okay, cool. And, but uh, that, you know, the rest of the tail, like a quarter, like you have this whole one beat, right? You know, a quarter of the beat yeah. in it's it's a layer and then like halfway in you know it's like it's all oh, okay so there's like six or like seven sandwiched. different layers maybe that's so cool. maybe i think there might be five actually i can't i think a couple of them are muted now that i remember with with the yeah. most recent one but like i've taken Still, like, that's a lot of layers it, it can be it can be but um then it's again, worth it really it adds up needs. that's what it needs sometimes and um yeah. It's usually about five. So do, how, do like you, one pack how do five you or six. process them all together? Like, what are your, I guess, some plugins so, that you like? So, um, I've found... You're still on Ableton, right? You're Ableton, yes. like, ride so, or die. Definitely, me too. And, I mean, I, I try to keep it, you know, of course, EQ, mostly stock. Um, I don't okay. really use compressors yeah, except for anything on the kick drum and, like, drums itself, you know? So you don't <laughs> compress your kicks together. Uh, just like the kick drum part, like the attack, and um, okay, and so with like that that upbeat that mm, mm, let's use your reverse bass mm. as an example, right? Mm, yeah, mm, right. So that mm, love that. Um, sometimes that'll be like longer than just a half beat. Like it'll be like three quarters of a beat. It's or, like, like two thirds, right? It starts on the yeah, triplet. It depends. It almost. But um, I like, saw but this it, tutorial years ago about that. That, that tripped me out since then. <laughs> and it's not a half. You know, it starts on a triplet or something. Volume amplitude is like, and when the timing, when things come in, you know, and some will mm -hmm. be, uh, for the most part, if there's one or two good distorted layers, and like, I don't know if you've done like Ableton warping, like the beginning. Well, I'll Ableton warp like one side, like just a little bit. And I'll have a high pass at like, you know, maybe depends like from 40 to 150. And when you're playing with that little bit of warping, plus like high pass either at a 48 dB cut or a 12 dB cut, you get these, this phasing in the mid and low mids that uh. can um, even like, if you even do an EQ pre distortion with warping on like layers. So you have three layers, one of them, you know, all of them got EQs, but they're all at different high passes. Um, one sub bass layer and then the kick drum, right? So that's yeah. five. So with those three reverse bass layers, um, sometimes I'm warping them. And sometimes that'll just like add this harmonic that just like makes this wow. perceived distortion because it's almost like a detune or something. Uh, I don't know if it's detuning. It's just, it's actually just like physically moving. I the see audio and the, spectrum the grains or I see. Yeah. And to where it's actually phasing with the other two layers wow. and creating a whole new sound. That's kind of insane. Its, it's, it's, it wow. gets pretty sick. I love that technique with Ableton and um, then high pass filtering. I like, I'm really kind of picky on where I do the cuts. Sometimes I'll take like an EQ three only no, no adjustment on the game <laughs> and I'll do the cross frequency. I'll just the cross frequency. Sometimes I'll get some um, cool harmonic. Oh, and you won't right adjust there. the gain just for the crossover for the phase. Yes. So like an all pass or something like that. Yeah. That's probably the in a way like an all pass. It's wow. it's it's almost yeah. It almost is like all pass because it's like it's it but just no uh, no attenuation right. Yeah. It's just crossing okay. the frequencies that's very interesting. with other layers. So is that that's a good thing? In some certain cases, not yes. always. In like certain that cases, crossover and all be, cases. I'll go back and forth, and depending what other instruments are going on, what the rest of the track sounds like, and um, wow. and so that'll like really other dimension. 
to whatever you need. For real. I mean, and, you know, I try to only do really one or two distortions or saturations. I have like th- three or four go to plugins Isotope Trash 2, Melda Production, yeah. Wave Folder, um, their Wave Ooh. Shaper, and their Saturator. Melda Production just kicks ass. Oh, and um, this one called Mistortion. I've, I've seen a couple of Distortion. guys use that in some hard style forums. And I use that sometimes, but I stick to the ones that I already know. And I'm like, okay, I know what these are going to do. I know what this is going to sound like. Boom. But then again, like, I don't want to over distort. It's like, I'm still just trying to get that clean. And if I'm starting with a synth, um, I'm just trying to get it as like wavetable proper. And um, yeah, from the get go. Yeah. And um and then just go from there. So really, so you synthesize your kicks pretty much. Obviously, not, if you're like sound designing not, everything, not you don't just take drums. like a. Oh, not the kick drums. The tails, the tails, and the, the reverse. Tails. Part. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. So you get. So wait, when you mean tail, is that also the reverse bass? Um. Yes and no. Like if you hear like, um, hmm, I'm trying to think of tracks that maybe popular that you know know. listen to audio freak stuff um a lot of his kicks are just like like just his kicks right not reverse bass Mm -hmm. style like his is down 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 but not the hard hard kicks like with the distorted attack with like a normal sounding kick drum you take you could you could take a synth and get a good enough distortion out of it all right i got you i thought i thought what you were saying was like because i know like in techno what they do is like they'll take the kick and then they'll just copy the kick and just add delay and reverb to it. And that's, they call it, they call it a baseline. <laughs> so I was assuming like you did the same yeah. thing with, with hard style. That is, that is what you do. So you don't have a separate bass channel for your I, Oh, bass. I do. I mean, I know what you're talking about though. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, with I reverb. Say, like, Cause it sounds so crazy. I don't understand how you get that from that, but you can't because hard style is too crazy to do stuff like that. And that was very like kind of whatever see what happens hard style is like fucking and because hard style is so like sound design oriented music already to like where it's like you're pushing the the maximum of like next level shit for the most part or you're not you know sometimes there's some chiller lower key hard style just with good clean sound design that has like a good dancey flow that's not just like Mm -hmm. over the top intense and like especially some of the raw stuff that's coming out is like the intention of that stuff, you know, and the style of it, it's darker, it's grittier. I mean, I do like just a cleaner, cleaner sound. I sent a link in the chat oh, open that it. later because it's going to play some audio. But basically, that's okay. a sample of like a kick without um, reverse bass. Oh, I'm probably playing in the background a little bit. But it's not a crazy kick. Oh, this is a dope like, fucking kick. It's saying? not a reverse bass, though. So those kind of techie uh. kicks... Um, maybe I guess you can play it. You got headphones on, so it's not going to play back. Uh, I don't want YouTube. I don't want Facebook to kick me out, kick this video off. Oh, yeah, um, fuck that. It, so like right. about a minute in. Eyes on shit. All right, let's see. So those kind of kicks are the ones I'm talking about that aren't reverse bass, but they're like a clean, punchy kick drum. Yeah, wow. And and the tail is like still clean, right? You know? So there's definitely a lot going on with these kicks. The tails. The tails, there's a lot of characters. It's not even like kick and kick drum. These are two completely different things in hard style, like yeah. transient and the tail. Yep. That's a beautiful kick though. It's kind of like that. Yeah. That called? It's like a robot dog. It's clean though. <laughs> it's got that bark. Like how are you clean and dirty at the same time? It's insane. Just precision, man. Precision. Yeah. Yeah. Audio freaks a fucking a, beast. That's why, man. Seriously. So, um, like the, those kind of style kicks, it's um, it's almost like the same. Uh, for me, it's like my experience is that it's almost the same concept as like layering a reverse bass part, the run, run, but you're just doing it at the beginning and it's longer. You know, you got your low mid, see, yeah. you know, section layering. You have a little bit of whatever growl you can find through distorting. And um, um, 
it really is just like sometimes layers just match and mesh and where like harmonics are appearing mm. to create certain, you know, sound. I see. Uh, it doesn't phase each other out. They kind of talk to each other nicely. Yeah. Basically. So do you, do you invert phases on your layers too? Uh, like just to see if it works you know, out. I haven't, I haven't tried. I haven't tried like in utility. That is a, it's a technique I heard. Yeah. Utility just flip the phase. Like when you I layer stuff. It. I have not. I that, and that's where the warping, I guess, comes in because I guess you kind of are, oh, yeah, in a way, shifting it, doing the same it, like, thing, you're shifting phase, the whole yeah. thing, though. Mm. Not exactly shifting, you're stretching, but yeah, in, stretching. in term, in turn, you are things are shifting, right? Ever so slightly, just yeah. in a different at a different rate, exponentially. It's crazy stuff, logarithmically, logarithmically, yeah. Damn. Um, but that's, I mean. I actually recorded. You went to school for this, yeah. Huh? Like you, you went to you went to school. Oh, they for don't this? teach you this shit in school, baby. <laughs> no. Rhythmic and... They um, it was that was more of the um in studio recording, oh, working on an analog like, console, yeah. patch base, oh, wow, okay. signal flow, um, the more ground up kind of learning. Yeah, you really. That's. That's why you have this um, approach to all of this. You learn from all this gear, really. That's it's very cool. Um, wow. In a way, all of it has come in handy. You know, it's it, a lot of it's come definitely from, from even in like my professional life to music to, um, um, yeah, and I guess even like the plugins I use, some of the, like hardware emulations and things of the sort. Mm. I kind of I, I guess things I you're have used to working on it. Yeah, from like the optical compressors to FET to um, mm. um, tube to yeah, I guess quote unquote thing? passive. Um, so you know, I guess some of these things along the way have like, but how useful are they really? I mean, they're more of just a self understanding kind of approach, right? Yeah. If, if, if anything, the listener is not going to hear whether works. or not. You know, exactly. I mean, mm -hmm. you can have five different hardware emulators, not know a thing about them, but if you know what they sound like and what they do and what's going to happen, you're at, are, you're at, in the same ballpark, you know, of like at least yeah. getting the workflow done. So it's more exactly. of like an interest thing, I, th I think. I, I think. <laughs> yeah. No, it definitely, I slowly am growing an interest more on these like hardware emulators and everything. Like I it's just cool kind of shit. went down this waves rabbit hole <laughs> and like, learning about like fat compressors like have you there's this one plugin i use on fucking everything on this album mm -hmm. it's, um, the omni schlep uh, multi-channel the multi-channel strip it's like 30 bucks on waves but it just it's a channel strip and it's an eq compressor you've seen it a thousand times but you can like change the compressor to a fat compressor and optical vca very quickly same thing oh. with like the EQs. It's like Is everything Andrew is Sheps? really streamlined. Andrew Sheps, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. It just I think wow, you might like that's it. That's a big plug-in. I've I have not seen this before. It's such a deal. Is it like is it still 30 bucks? It's 38 bucks right now. 38 bucks. I got it. And it's like it's amazing. And definitely worth the shot. The way you huh. can like reference things on the side too, like there's um you can solo the sides, mute the sides, mids like really quickly. I found that kind of useful. The like, solo button press. Oh. There's what like six it? different like stereo. You can, um, what is that called? Um, mono, or you can just listen to the sides only. All that, all variations of stereo listening. And it's like um, streamlined, so the latency is not too intense. Like if you're not using a compressor, then it's not going to use any CPU, like or just the EQ or whatever the hell you're going to use it for. Definitely okay. worth checking out, especially because like you're talking about the choice paralysis of having like a fat compressor, VCA, all this stuff. Uh -huh. like, the whole point with this plugin, when I was like watching like his whole spiel on it was you want to be able to just switch between these sounds very easily and without that volume difference that you would get normally with switching plugins. Huh. So I guess like with the ease of switching, like you push the VCA and the FET button, the volume should ideally be the same-ish so you can better get the gauge of what sounds better to you. 
I'm going to look at yeah. this. This is actually kind of cool because um, I'm paying yeah, check it out, man. 15 bucks a month for Slate. But I mean, um, mm. those also come with the hardware, the, the, the microphone emulations, which I'm using their yeah. mic right now. I have two of their mics and they actually work pretty good because I, I was recording some of my dad's drums and stuff. But this is fucking cool, actually. I really like this. Um, I'm like, I'm so late to this wave stuff. Like, shout out to Ted again, front business. <laughs> Teddy! <laughs> gave me a bunch of wave shit. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, and they're, yeah. they're on sale all the time. And um, yeah, so worth can't it. Can't really go wrong, you know? <laughs> but like, also at the, the same time, I'm also just like coming back to just stock plugins. <laughs> like, I have all these compressors and everything, but like, I love, I fucking love the glue compressor like i don't know why ease of access it's just like three knobs really well a bunch more but i only really touch three knobs and it just does every i don't know it's just so easy simple ableton's plugins are really amazing they've got, got live 11 much better yeah yes <laughs> i can say that i was there for live eight <laughs> <laughs> r.i.p <laughs> yeah <laughs> crazy ass oh man eq just sounded all whack i remember the limiter is still shit don't even yeah even trust the limiter at all you know i i use it when i actually want a brick wall limiter that's mm. all i'm at you know so it's actually come in handy wash something i really i mean just like the top of something like i wouldn't use more than like 5 db cut like for example last night i used it because um the baseline, I put it in the, I put the, the track in the car and the kick was just too like, dun, dun. and um, I didn't want to go back and redo everything within the seven layers. And um, because I had actually a bead the, um, the layers versus the recorded baseline because I resampled it. And I'm like, what? Mm. This sounds different. And so I did just like, you know what? Oh, I'm damn. just going to beat around the bush. I'm going to put a hard limiter on it. And, <laughs> and it uh, worked. I haven't gone to the car since yet, but, um, uh, so I can't tell you if it hundred percent work. worked, but, um, in theory it should. Mm. Right. So what do you, it should, I hope, I mean, if there's no fucking crazy artifacts from maybe yeah. busted ass, we'll see. But, I mean, um, it sounds good so far. So, um, okay. Yeah. I was say something. What, so what limiter do you use on your master? Um, it's like, guess yeah. Let, mean, let's, let's talk now, mastering chains. Oh, okay. If you have a crazy wow. one, yeah, sure. Um, that is a continuously learning yeah, experience. It really I mean, is. I've like, there's a reason why there up, are guys that back. only do that, uh, huh? I've like I've scaled it up and then I tried to scale it back and now I'm like I'm I'm always changing how I'm mastering my stuff too. You know, right now, um. I really am trying to just keep it as like nothing. There's nothing too crazy. My buddy actually showed me this, um, this, uh, company. Uh, what is it called? Um, hold on. I'm going to about to pull it up right now. Plugin Alliance. That's what it is. Plugin Alliance. Yeah. And, um, they're another hardware emulation, you know, they Ooh. do like Alicia. They have some, um, SPL, they have. Uh, I think they have. Um, what is it? Uh, Shadow Hills. I think they have one of those too. There's a couple companies that do that. Yes. So I'll use one of their EQs, just like one, you know, and I'll use Fab Filter Pro Q3. So it's like, depending on where I want to do it, yeah. I'll have two EQs, multi band in the center of those two. Um, that I probably uh, have the Fab Filter first because I do mm. a side high cut at um whatever yeah. 120 to 150 because um 150 okay uh it depends yeah it really depends it really really depends depends what else is going on on the sides i mean i don't really i think that sometimes that that going that low below 150 is gonna just be a little bit phasing yeah, that's that's true it's it's just all mud at that point i guess yeah it's all and, my um thing yeah, and exactly. I mean, someone can use an imager and stuff, but I don't know if imagers actually sum or if they actually subtract. So I just, <laughs> cut, you know, keeps you up at night. <laughs> yeah. So I just, like, okay, I know this is, this will do its thing. So I'll do that. And um, I already have a pretty 
tailored multi-band compressor preset and i've get i've gotten a lot better if like at hearing what's going okay. on and stuff in terms right of on. attack and release times you know uh ratios and i keep the threshold fairly light enough to where um just kissing um, it kind of in a way sometimes sometimes i'm doing a little bit more uh i guess uh intense would be like uh, more intense i guess sometimes it'd be like negative five you know maybe okay. pb cut that, that is it's a little intense. how many bands do you have four four bands yeah and five bands like i guess like for your your sub you're not really are you compressing your sub at all just um sometimes i have the limiter pushed down and um mm. oh that's doing enough sub compression and that's doing enough if i'm doing it right attack release settings and um mm. because hard style Definitely. it's like it's so like monoton monotony and like it's it's yeah. total you know track response anyway that mm. if you get it right know you know and the you, constant you, volume is and you get yeah. some gain out of it afterwards it does give a and it depends sometimes i'll turn the multi-band off and just throw it away um it really depends on the rest of the mix um i'm no wizard every time you know so i kind of just like go through and then i go back into the mix and make okay what can i change here because fab filter pro l is my my limiter of choice you know yeah me too or, i mean fuck dude every i mean it's of course, there it's is amazing. a reason why it's an industry <laughs> digital round. I like. I didn't get it for so long because I'm like two hundred dollars for a fucking limiter. And that's like ridiculous. Who like I'll just use ozone. Like, fine. No, <laughs> it's, it makes a huge difference. It's it's way better than ozone. It this. does. It, you know, in terms ozone. of transparency, I think it uh, definitely holds its ground so well. I mean, yeah. I was using ozone. I was using Ozone's one for a while too, but like me too. Um, yeah, years. I think the fact of the oversampling options, um, the look ahead, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. just is actually a little bit. It's a little bit more. Um, there's more flavors too, like yes. modern. There's like um, what is that called? The, the crazy one, aggressive. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I think everything aggressive I have is on aggressive. <laughs> It's so easy to hit like negative three loops and it sounds good still. <laughs> I've, I've never hit shit that high. What do you, so hard style, like what's I've what's seen the some loops? stuff hit like negative two. I'm like, how are you guys even doing that? And <laughs> it doesn't even sound like it either. You know, I think it's just like the low yeah, end stuff. Yeah, some Skrillex like, stuff. You know, well, yeah. It's just how the mix is done as well. It's just fucking fly in my mm -hmm. room right now. Um, Black magic. So... Uh, and it depends, you know, I've heard some even pro stuff that's like negative five, negative six. Okay. You know, it's like, okay, I think it's yeah. just, you know, and plus when you're uploading it on Spotify that you already know the compression on there is yeah. bad YouTube, SoundCloud. Um, it's only when people it buy it or download it to where it actually is going to make a difference. difference. Yeah. Yeah, that's the In only the club. Reason. I mean, Definitely. and the club, you know, if you notice on DJ mixers, I've noticed this every single time I've like in my you know <laughs> in my learning experience with mastering stuff that i've turned the gain up so it's almost like it's mm -hmm. um you can match whatever you're playing with you know it doesn't it really yeah that's true it doesn't really matter <laughs> if really you're matter. playing it if you're getting you can, negative from loudness you know, wars yeah yeah from negative I five to negative that. three or two it's like to get that extra few db might as well just push up the fucking low EQ on the mixer. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. It doesn't, yeah. It doesn't, I don't think it matters as much nowadays. And I watched this video actually recently of this this guy. He did a demonstration of um, um, like a very dynamic soft track and a, med a moderate, you know, sounding track and like this mm. aggressive sounding mix. And and obviously, you know, when you're listening to the reference master, um, it's mm. it's the linearity and, and loudness, perceived loudness is is it's apparent, right? But mm. when you bring all of those to um, down to Spotify's level, the mm. actual perceived Loops. loudness yeah. goes in reverse order. I so see. Like the That's most very interesting. track sounds like it's 
a drop in the bucket. Really quiet. That medium one is kind of getting there, and that very dynamic one is like, whoa, really this sounds loud. great. When you're listening on Spotify's, you know, um, loudness mm. unit full scale. Um, and that's honestly like, this is a good thing. And just bring dynamics back, I guess. <laughs> like, I, I guess for the longest time, like with CDs and, you know, just ripping things off MP3s, where everyone was just trying to get their shit loud as possible. And I guess it is a blessing for loofs to have been invented. I guess I don't know how long it's been around, but I know that like it's a, a much question. more accurate reference. No, like RMS is a it's really a, a phenomenal feat in audio engineering. Whoever discovered that out? That's a good question. And when was this? It does, it does measurement? work. <laughs> yeah, I use loops all the time, even in my mixes. Like when I um when I compress or dry saturate something, I'll like. I'll put a loose meter, the waves meter, before uh -huh. and after. Uh -huh. Just try and get it similar, just so I can A B it and see if the tone is where I want it. You know, before and after stuff. what? Oh, um, so say I'll have like a drive, an overdrive. I'll add it to a sound, and obviously it's going to sound better because it's way louder. Gotcha. So I'll that's, put a, a utility smart. and like a, a loose meter, uh -huh. and I'll just use the loose meter to gauge how the to match the loudness rather than like a peak meter or something like that. Cause you can't, you can't really trust that. You can't trust peak meters unless it's for your kick. <laughs> that is a good really point. Actually. I, wow. I, I, I love that. Actually. That's awesome. Um, yeah, check it out. It definitely helps. It helps make loudness sure you're making meter before the right and decision. After. That's brilliant. Yeah. Actually. I just use Uline's free meter, so. Okay. Yeah. I got um, the Waves meter. Right, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. They're all the same, though. Rough, roughly, give or take, you know? But that one's a good one, too, because it's got a little bit more in-depth um, detail, of, and I think it has a few different loudness units, uh, types. Yeah, of I meter, think so, right? too. I only stare at one number, though. <laughs> what is it, lunch? Integrated yeah. or short-term is one of those. So any loudness meter will work. Definitely. If you're watching this loudness meter. Yeah. If you guys are, I think, I think Melda has you, one too. Yeah. You guys are getting such good information today, just on everything, man. And if you guys checked us out last time, fucking, this is my boy Visex. Last time we were talking about his album. This time we're kind of just talking about, um, my workflow work for spaces stuff. and plugins that we're both using and just different tools for just, different types of workflow and so uh yeah, yeah. dude it's all kinds go back into this video man this is a good one yeah so um, so how do you start a song i know this is like the most basic general question anyone can ask but i mean how like like a super guess, solid your songs are pretty fucking dynamic or no a song like a track song your, your stuff is really dynamic. You got some crazy, crazy awesome B so sections. I'm trying to think of like, that. okay, with the most recent original ones, I'm going to go into my, um, you know, I was for a while, like just starting with like crazy ass drops and stuff like that. Now I've been trying to like yeah. play things a little more melodic okay. or like, like play some pads or play some um, maybe even dirtier pads, like with single note mm. monophonic pads. And um, drones, okay. In a way, but like in a rhythm, in a melody. Um, I've been playing a lot of like darker. Um, what is that? Um, melodic minor, where it's like almost like that. You skip the seventh note, where it's got like this Middle Eastern oh, wow. style beat, and you do that with like hardcore or hard style, it just gets dark, nasty. So, um, huh. I've been doing I that recently. That or um, sometimes I'll have vocals uh, written down that I want to record and. Um, Cause I've been doing my own vocals for a little while now. Really? Yes. Nice. And um, I'm doing that's like a whole screaming, cat, rapping, vocal work. Smoke. Oh yeah. shit! So You're rapping? It's it's more like phrases or like chorus or or uh, hooks. Oh, I see. Look those. What on have you? The, right. Like, the pre-drop chat. This stuff. I see. What you mean. Yeah. There you go. Like if you listen yeah, you to DJ's that talk, some shit like that. Well, it's a little bit more. Uh, it's a little bit more formulaic. And oh, that's formulaic. true. Yeah, you're going formulated. You more, it's yeah. a little bit more 
more Reach curated. Out. I see. And creative than just uh, it's not just like a cymatic sample pack. Yeah. Nah. Get it. Uh-uh. So you're not just doing that. <laughs> I actually write something funny or cool or um buck nasty or whatever the fuck. So um I mean buck sometimes nasty. recently I, I guess so it, I would start from there. I I I some tracks I start with the chords, pads, and sound design. Some tracks I'll start with the bass line and a nasty riff. Um, sometimes I'll end up landing on a kick where I'm just like, oof, this is dope. And okay. I'll- I was just going to say, like, it's like never drums then, but it is if you just so happen to come across it. It's not usually drums. Oh. No. Because drums are like the not really They're all the in- same. Yeah. Same thought as hard and starred style. With hardcore, it's a little different. I've done a couple of drum and bass tracks, which. Um, Started as that's hard true. style and then went to German bass. So oh, that's cool. Um, and I mean, every single track that I've been doing, I'm like looking through through this list has started. So you're kind of going a little different. beyond like hard style. Would you say that? So yes. you're working on some drum and bass. I'm some doing like drum and bass, UK hardcore sound, like Gabber sound, okay. fucking um, and uh, a lot of gated kick where it's just like heavy early like earlier hard style just droney almost like techno kicks like where it's got that big old mm. reverb yeah. and it's almost like, like big room hollow. house huh <laughs> i was gonna say almost like big room house <laughs> nah uh, it's more like that uh <laughs> crazy uh fucking it's like i know what you mean though techno like hollow techno. definitely yes i love that sound that's definitely and right. um I've been doing that that in a lot of my tracks so it's a lot of like just riff based stuff and um big reverby stuff and uh as long as the sound is kind of unique that I'm using in the riff and uh pitch modding and that whole shebang so yeah. it really depends I mean I've noticed myself working on a little more remixes than originals lately because I have a bunch of originals that are done and then i'm splitting out for those five eps um there's mm. gonna be a, a few more on the way i'm sure just as like things pop up like there's some stuff i had started a lot of the stuff i have started d- does start from melody though and um okay. because i think and I you saw you and, and mid intro is a lot easier than i can do breakdown style stuff i see so you yeah. um play piano obviously when did it's, you did you learn like when you were young, I took or as one a class at that. HCC and I learned how to stay in key and I learned about different <laughs> minor scales and that was it. And I just that that's basically it. That's yeah, and I just there. picked it up from there and just like learned how to stay in key, how to stay, you know, whatever, and like just try to even um, uh, watch where my fingers go and if things kind of sound like they flow, like I'll just stick with like four or five, six chords. Maybe, right, you know, and see where I can kind of go with that. If I find three that work, then I'll just um, see what else I can add on to it, what I can play on the top of my right hand that goes with the lower register. And so it really... Damn, uh, yeah, you really put in the work. I'm just, like, figuring out. I'm trying to figure out what works. Figuring out what works, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'll record it. That's that's the thing. If I don't record (laughs) record it, it. (laughs) yes, then I will not remember for sure. I mean, it's tried and true. I fucking will not remember it. Oh my um, God. the the capture the capture button on Ableton, Bro. the F nine. <laughs> Is it F nine? No, that's record. Uh, oh, the capture MIDI on top, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, where you yes. just like jam something out. Yeah, that saved my ass a lot of times. I don't use that often enough. I really just stick with like the old. All right, it's record. You start Let's recording. Play. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, yep. There, I know. I hear people using some Ableton things, and they're like, "Dude, don't you use that?" I'm like, "What? No, I, not really." And uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of what come to mind recently, but um, oh, especially with Eleven coming out, have you seen uh, dude, features on Eleven? That, that is Copy? already kind of like, all right. I really should probably learn these features or get adaptive. <laughs> but then again, do I need to? I mean, the fact that um, Ableton 10 is already that is true. You don't want to fuck your workflow up after a certain while when you've been doing this for a long time. Like, you don't want to mess cool what you things, got going on, up. like the whatever the ball delay, and there's a whatever they're making a convolution reverb. And, mm. um, 
Um, I do like the fact yeah, that you can pitch weird. bend chord notes, individual notes within the same clip. That is fucking sick. Whoa, can you? Yes. I, I didn't know that. I think that is a thing. That's I'm, insane. you know, I'm not a hundred percent, but I'm fuck? pretty sure, pretty sure that I was like, wow, that could be a game changer for uh, yeah. Imagine like, like chords, on the fly just kind of stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's pretty, pretty, pretty major. Um, yeah. So we'll see. And, you know, I might split it with my friend and just let us have the two downloads. And, um, yeah. Yeah. That'd worth be, it. Definitely. Upgrade. And, um, yeah, buddy. Um, so I guess, like, do you have another question about, like, sound design? Do you, have sessions where like you go in you're like okay, all i'm gonna do is design sounds like do you have sound design sessions not as often where, like, not really as working on i was just thinking about that yesterday i'm like man i haven't done that in a while because i would and there's been a couple of times where i've sat and just make like 15 or 20 you know what i mean and mm-hmm. and i'll say about 60 to 70 percent of the time i will st- take older stuff um or i will literally um you know when i start from if i if i start from scratch it's it's a hit or miss sometimes but if i and even when i it, it, i mean it's a hit or miss either way even if i go through a preset and i'm modifying it to my liking whatever like fits my looks like it's gonna fill my plate at the time whatever i feel like eating um then I'll kind of just like, all right, this is cool. This is kind of sounds good in these lower notes. It sounds good in these upper notes. Maybe it doesn't sound so good here, but I like this here. I'll just keep it anyway. And then I'll take that and put it in another track. Or if I'm working on another track, I'm like, I'm sick of all these sounds. I'll change all of them or <laughs> most of them. Like if I have like, <laughs> And I'll have a good, like, I don't know, 12 to 15 different um, channels of just different sounds. And so... Oh, just kind uh, of referencing or going through them all. Yes. A very methodical I process. I literally copy and paste MIDI just like from channel to channel and like Oh yeah, every, okay. Find the every best eight sit. every eight beats or every eight bars do 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 and like and those three things that oh, like, interesting. like three different three different channel sounds. So so boop, yeah. boop, boop. and um um and then I'll play from wow. there and just like take those three notes that one, two, three and either pitch them up, down, whatever, right? And uh, even, like, do a pitch bend. If, if anything fills. sounds right. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so it almost, okay. like, just sounds like one mo- fucking big old chunky sound when it's really three different things. Just yeah, like, okay. Like, I've always kind of wondered how you did that. Like, burr, yeah. Burr, like, so just really it just like, works. Dynamic you know? effects. Wow. And it, you know, kind of gives imaging effects and stuff of the sort. And um, Yeah, it does. I like okay. multi-band panning. That's super fun, especially if you're doing it kind of fast. What the you're fuck? Doing, <laughs> multi-band really panning. Short. Yeah. So what do you do? You um, separate the channels and then put an auto pan on it. Uh, you no. I just literally have this plugin. That's a multi-band tremolo. Oh. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> that's it, sick. It doesn't just tremolo up and down. It goes left to right too. Left so. To right. Um, that's insane. Yeah, I I, I gotta mess with more of that. That's like I guess my what is that called? I don't know. Something I gotta work on. My multi band shit. It's gotta every time I open it up, I'm like it's it's all daunting. I tried to use it on my mastering for a while, but I could never like like you said. You said you have a, this a setting that works for all this shit you you do, but like I still have yet to find that kind of setting for me. I guess I'm always. I don't know. I just got to do more work with it, especially with what you're doing with like this panning stuff. <laughs> like you were saying something else about multi multi band side chain. Oh yeah, that's kind of crazy. That's, that's kinda... like more for reverse basses only. I don't do it for anything else. Mm-hmm. And, and well, no, that's not true. I do it, it might for work though. Vocals on top of leads. I do it vocals on top yeah. of um, other stuff, but especially when vocals are coming in or leads on top of. Oh wait, so you, so you're not multi banding? Um, what's that called? You're not side chaining to the kick when you multi band side chain. That's not what you're mm. talking about. In reverse bases, yes. In oh, in reverse bases, but everything no. else when you're talking, I see. Have you heard of this track? Um, this oh, fucking track. This plugin track spacer. Oh, why have I? Uh, 
me see if I have. Crazy. It's a little convoluted to like set up in your plug in your DAW, but it's basically like this EQ side chain. Like it'll take in it'll take signal and uh -huh. duck those frequencies of the incoming signal from on the signal, whatever you put the plug in on, if that makes sense. So it'll oh. side chain to whatever you set it to, but just it, it'll EQ out. It'll carve out those frequencies. Gotcha. So the, I see a, a high pass and a low pass. So if you low pass it to 10 K, everything above 10 K will be side chained, right? Yeah. But it's, um, it's an EQ though. So it's like, if you just have like something at like what, like a one K sine wave or something, only one K will be ducked down. And gotcha. everything else would be kind of, but it works for vocals and it's like, uh, yeah, you might like that for I'll check it out. hard style endeavors. Cause that shit's crazy. It almost like, sounds, it seems I'm like all about making, making you... things easier. <laughs> right. I love those yeah. plugins where it just kind of yeah, does most of the work the for you. Man. I'm all about it. Um, I'll check this one out. This one and uh, Soothe 2. Um, I'm yeah. definitely going to check that out. That one's Chef's a lot cheaper. Omni. The Chef's Omni. Oh, yeah. Great. That it's one is be. definitely worth it. That is Such super cool. Um, yeah. So I definitely have a little bit of... There's a few things I definitely want to do. I'm going to have a sound design day. Um, I'm going to try those plugins out and, see, and let you know what I think. And... Yeah. Um, yeah, and then go from there. I got to do something too. Fucking multi band. Yeah. No, I got to just work on more multi band stuff. I got to lab it up with my kicks a little more. Honestly, I've kind of, you know, you, you know, um, Cashmere's Kick Essentials. Yes, bro, <laughs> it's the best plugin ever. <laughs> like, oh my god, it, that, it just makes any kick just so much better, and like. Fuck! When I found that plugin, I was kind of upset. This is one of those like I don't know. It's a free it's plugin free? by Cashmere. It's fucking free, and I'm like, man, what? I'm I just right I just now. kind of I overly rely on this plugin, and that's something I don't want to do anymore. So I'm gonna have to lab it up with my kicks. You inspired me. I gotta add six layers. I am getting this thing right now. Dude, I'm all about the uh, check it previews, out, man. I don't know how it'll sound on a hard style kick, though. I mean, um, it should we'll sound see. cool. We we'll will see. see. I don't even know. know what the knobs say, but I saw free and I'm taking it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you can choose a sub note, it'll accentuate a sub note for you. It's a transient knob, like a multi band knob, multi band compression. It's just all one knobs. Oh, sweet, dude. That's my flavor right there. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. It's easy peasy. Get it done, you know what I mean? I used to be against, like, and sampling and, and one-knobbing and all that. I'm just like, dude, ha don't forget to make music. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's so easy yeah. to get caught up in the shenanigans of technicals. Uh, yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. This is awesome, man. Where you're in San Jose right now? Yep, I'm in San Jose, California. Hey, where is my cashmere email? Where is my cashmere? <laughs> Waiting for your review. Um, it's okay, they'll send it later sometime. Um, I'll check it out though. Yeah, I really, um, definitely check it out. Whoo, I am definitely due for some. Um, I think it's about lunch, the second lunch time over here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I need some lunch too. Yeah, amazing, I know, it's man. getting that time. This is yeah, a lot, dude, this is a lot easier of than I thought it would be. Oh, like, doing the Zoom call? It's really chill. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Nervous. Oh, dude, yeah, no worries. Look, at you got the 808 the breeze coming in right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, super windy. I got to open this. This one too. I miss it out there, man. I'm so due to be back. Yes, you are. Everyone uh, misses you. So when yeah, I come back, you'll definitely here. be a visit. So um, yeah, that will happen. But we'll come um, track together. Yes, you chance. I have to work on some stuff with, and I I gotta spend like a good time out there if I'm gonna really work on tracks. So um, it's gonna be a thing. 
So I think in the meantime. Uh, yes, make it a thing. Yeah. Get that vaccine. So yeah, I know. Whenever that thing happens, man, I'm going to be about it for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, in the meantime, bud, uh, I think I answered that question when you asked about the mastering chain, though. For Proud Filter Pro L, EQs. Yeah. Very seldomly where I use a saturator, but I've done it before. Um, mm, I know what you mean. Yeah, I, um, I want use, like, to just have shirt. that magic grittiness. I like, I like, guess I use on yeah. satin. Yeah, just a little bit of just overall. Satin is um, a good word for that. No, no, I'm, it's a plug-in. Satin. It's a tape machine plug-in. Oh. And I'll, I'll throw that on <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but I guess it is a good word for it because it is what it, it is. Yeah. Satin. It does make shit sound satin. I will. I'm going to check that out. I have no idea how much that one is. I got, I got that one from a friend. But it, it's fucking awesome. Tape machines are. Lesson. I just like I never would have thought I'd be doing shit like this. Like man, I was making bounce music five years ago. <laughs> like putting <laughs> tape machines on my master and everything. Yeah. Just worrying about textures. Dude, that's awesome. wicked. I'm glad. Yeah, I definitely fell in love with the audio engineering mixing side of music yeah. more so throughout this pandemic than like just making fast bangers. It's mad fun. I'm gonna get some water. Too. It is, yeah. I need some water too. Yes, yes, yes. I'm I'm glad you showed me these things. Yes, I'm, yes, I'm, always, I'm always very interested in yes, bro. that. I know, yeah, you're yes, bro. You're a guy that loves experimenting. And I know you can definitely you know, make some crazy shit with these. Yep. So in the meantime, I'm gonna make some lunch and uh finish these cables and I'm yeah, gonna bro. I'll give you. I'll oh give yeah, you you're, what you're I think. building cables. That's yeah, crazy. I'm building some XLR quarter inches for in here out of Mogami twenty five forty nine. So um, I'm curious oh, to hear wow. how they sound. Um, I did one upgrade in here already with cables, and it made it. It made a significant difference. It made a significant enough difference to say that it's making a it's difference. A, but um, wow, is it improving workflow? That. I don't know, we'll but it's see. fun, and I love doing this shit, so um, I will keep you posted. Yeah, someone's got to. I hate all the variables that come into, like, just trying to make this perfect sound. It's it's so frustrating, but I'm I'm glad you're doing it and figuring all this out. Yeah, because, I, mean, like I, I want to upgrade my mic cable, too, that. so that's also a thing. Ooh, mm-hmm. I'll send that, you a link. Of, what is, uh, like, is, what creates a, sorry, this is a random question. What makes ahead. a high-quality cable? It's like the I it's guess the, the purity of the copper, the, the, the shielding. Purity, okay. And um, that makes sense. That's pretty much, and the gauge of the copper, I suppose. Mm. It, it really is just the quality of metals, you know? The, the, the Very interesting. Transducing elements, you know, just are going to have mm. a, a different character, you know, that just because of the process of how it was, um, how the copper was mm. made and how it was stranded and. That's basically that in a nutshell. That's really fucking insane. <laughs> I'm going to be thinking about this a lot. <laughs> just the fact that like wiring isn't just like, it's not so static or, uh, you know. That's Check out this video. I'm going to post it in the chat. And you yeah. uh, take a listen to this later. And it is a okay. Kanare, Mogami, Gepco, Belden, Kiwi, Apogee, and Monster microphone cable shootout. And if you can hear wow. a difference, then, oh wow, okay. yeah. And yeah, it's 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 is. actually it actually kind of opened my mind to like, wow, cables do make a difference, you know. I'm definitely gonna check this out. Yeah, let me know what you think, and. Um, so I'm going to go do that plus food. Yeah, make some lunch. I'm going to get some yeah. lunch too. Get some coffee. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. All right, buddy. Thank it was you. Great Thanks having you. Me Thanks Thank again, dude. To the album. My boy, this is my boy Visex from Hawaii 808. Fucking, he's got a 25 track album, uh, long intros, and I am the Buckness. And I'm going to be continually releasing stuff and keeping you guys updated on the regular of some new stuff that, um, I'll be deciding to push out. So you guys have a yes. lovely day. And Visex, I'll see you around, my man. See you soon, man. Come yeah.